Toy Tractor Times is a 2017 National Farm Toy Show. We're here with Tom Jacobson of Arveda, Colorado. Tom, that's a little ways uh, from Iowa. How? Oh, 900 miles, yeah. That's yeah, a pretty good drive. Yep, yeah, 13 hours. Well, you've got something really cool here, and congratulations on a fifth place uh, in the small scale division, always very competitive. Uh, HO scale. We don't HO scale. we don't get to see that too often, and you've done a fantastic job. So uh, give us a little tour of the farm. Well, what it is is it's a representation of um, the farm my mother grew up on, uh, way back turn of the century. My uh, great grandpa started farming in South Dakota with the Great Land Rush, and uh, my uh, grandfather took over, and my uncle took over, and I spent all my my summers on the farm. I actually grew up in Hawaii. My dad well, was, that's a nice place to grow up. <laughs> dad was a civil engineer and we lived in Hawaii for 12 years so I spent my summers on the farm and then I ended up going to South Dakota State University um, as an ag major so I can spend my weekends working so there's not much I haven't done on this farm and so it was a, it was a real labor of love to, to do a reproduction. Um, of the farm and uh, try and capture all the details, um, do it at a different scale than, than um, 164th. I do some model railroading and uh, so... So if, imagine having that railroad background help find a lot of these pieces because I definitely want to learn about you know where you found them and... Yes, so. there's a few, few uh, bought items, the combines, uh, the trucks, um, a lot of the stuff has been altered modified, detailed. The little swather, that was hand built. Um, Is that a versatile there? That, yeah. I have a versatile at home, but okay. that's actually a Massey Ferguson 36. Okay. And, Very neat. Uh, so all the buildings were scratch built. And so swathing uh, small grain, and then we've got the um, swath uh, pickup over pick here. Yeah, pickup header, yep. And, and uh, uh, you know, so like the truck tarps, um, stuff like that um, was all all scratch built. We've got a international here being welded on, and a Ford Louisville semi truck. For yep, grain. nine thousand. So the truck came in real basic. Um, so we put all the detail parts on mirrors, marker lights, chrome stack, change the rims, make it look a little more like the real one. And uh, we got another classic truck here at the uh, Grain Auger. What model is that? That's an F600. Um, we actually had one, bought it brand new. It was a 74. Okay. And uh, so good old truck. And uh, the Grain Augers are hand built. They don't. Nobody makes a good Grain Auger or any Grain Auger in HO scale. So. You got the Oliver Fleet line out there. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, so the grain bins are a kit. You can. I mean, you can make them as high as you want. You can get add-on rings. And, uh, I like like the vegetable garden there, too. <laughs> yeah, my aunt, would, both my grandma and my aunt were quite gardeners, so. Uh, well, uh, let's walk around here. We've got a cornfield. Uh, I really, you know, one of the things, I, I get to film a lot of farm equipment out in the field for my Big Tractor Power YouTube channel, and the fence rows. I just always like seeing a big, thick fence row that's long, and it really helps offset this uh, the combine and the truck. Oh, yeah, this shelter belt was actually... Uh, built by the Army Corps of Engineers right after World War II. Um, so the way I understand it is my grandpa had to buy the trees and then they came in and planted the shelter belt and uh, um, it definitely worked. And then we've got a, a Ertl 9510 and 187 scale out yep. here and uh, international truck. International truck, grain box is custom built. You got and, the roll tarp uh, on it? Yep, and the actual the box, the, the hoist actually works on it. So. Um, that matches the other truck in the machine shed getting okay. welded on. Sure. Uh, and I guess we'll walk over here and you've got one of my all-time favorite combines, the John Deere 7700 yep. Turbo. And uh, it looks like, yeah, I'm going to guess you uh, took the corn head off a of 9510 and uh, modified it to fit on this one. You were the only one that has ever picked up on that, yeah. yeah. The header wasn't very prototypical that came with it, so I was actually able to shorten one of those headers. and. It worked out really, really well. Um, uh, it's it's a cool combine, and I mean, I yeah. like how they got the trash whippers. Yeah, in the it's back got the little it. flippers on there, and um, as far as the corn goes, there's over 1,200 individual pieces of corn. Wow! So I made a template, and 
pinned it onto the onto the table and went to drilling holes and and then each piece is glued in by hand so looks very good yeah it turned out pretty authentic and i'm guessing right over here we have another custom auger complete yep. with the um auger shielding down there on the end that's a, an allied auger that was the first auger my uncle or the farm ever purchased very and, cool. uh, you know and that's what i like about model farming is the history you know they're all oh, the yeah. things that we remember and we yep. can recreate it um, and so we've got it looks like uh, hogs hog um, unit here yep. um, a friend of mine actually took the, we took three quarter inch aluminum round bar and put it in a lathe and made the feeders hmm. um, and uh, he put pretty good detail I wanted an actual lid so if you if you can get it close enough to it you can actually see where there's actually a lid yeah we can see that and uh, um, then uh, uh, I was going to ask about this uh, rail car. Is that storage or storage? Okay. Yeah, and they stored yep. wood and T posts and barbed wire and anything miscellaneous. Uh, uh, the story I have from my uncle is that my grandpa bought it back in the 50s. It's an old Sioux Line box car that they retired when they went to all steel cars. So. Let's see, and then I, I like how you have the light detail throughout the display, um, just kind of lighting up the farmyard and. Uh, also got a cloth square baler. That's pretty neat. Yeah. You know, down there. Now is this a chicken house here? Or? You know what it used to be. That was what okay. it was originally built for. Um, again, talking to my relatives, my grandma was really into chickens back in the, the 40s, 50s, and uh, they were told that if, uh, to uh, try and increase egg production, the market was going up. Well, I think my grandpa caught on that that usually when they do that, we're going to war. And that was in the 19, 1939 or 1940. Okay. So they built that chicken coop and um, uh, raised a ton, a ton of chickens, my mom told me. And then we finally turned it into a farrowing barn. Okay. Um, and now uh, I was going to ask you about a big John Deere four wheel drive. Is that a 9620? Or? You know, I think it is. Um, I, I can't remember. I think you can actually read the number on it. That was an yeah. Atherin product. Uh, Atherin, they did a great job with those. They did that a beautiful 7700. job with stuff. And uh, you know, speaking of Atherin, I'm guessing over here the 7930 might be um, from them as well. Or? Yeah, and it's either that or it's an. I'm not sure. It might even be like a like an 8300 or an 8310. Oh, we've got um, a, Do they make the tandem disc that goes with it, or is that? Um, they made the disc and then I modified it. Okay. So I took two discs and uh, put the wings on it. I had to reconstruct okay. the sides and build oh. the frame to get the proper angle on the, the disc game. That's really, and you know the thing about, you know, we, we use a lot of these uh, trees in 64 model yep. farms, but trees are tall. They're a lot bigger than houses yeah. and the tractors and, you know, this is just great seeing it in the proper scale and uh, how that looks with the uh, 7930 on the disc. Or yeah. well, even the house, you know, with all the bushes, yep. I could I could get get stuff almost pre-made. You know, and just the landscaping of that is, you know, it just looks like a very tranquil place to My Aunt to grow Jean up. was really into flowers, so I tried to, she's no longer with us, and, and uh, so I, this is, you know, like I said, really an honor of my, my aunt and uncle, uh, George and Jean Knudsen, and my mom, that was my mom's brother. And uh, we've got the barn. We've got a nice, looks like a pretty good sized uh, cattle herd out here. Yeah, and, uh, actually we got a few that looks like we've had an anthrax casualty invasion the, uh, or something. But uh, so we got the round bales. Uh, imagine this is the family barn here. Yep. Uh, we got a Ford uh, pickup truck. Old Ford truck. Yep. And I tried to find a blue one. We actually had an old blue and white one, but. Um, I guess when it comes to dioramas and hand grenades, close enough is... Well, do you find the one you're looking for? So you got the troughs and the, the fencing, and yep. uh, is that all available? Uh, um, all the modeling? fencing's handmade. Okay. Uh, the feed troughs were handmade. Very nice. Um, even uh, the bale feeders. Um, all the cows are hand-painted. Um, I don't know if you can see, but they, yep. even the Herefords have a pink nose. and yep. the. The hoofs and and it was just funny when and I started building them and it was just like man something's missing and it was just enough to put the little pink on the nose and a couple eyeballs and that's good 
you can see the difference. So. And I, I wanted to look, you know, we've got, it looks like another old Ford truck um, out in the woods. Yep, and, old uh, rusted truck. We've got the, uh, I guess that must be the family name Knudsen on the... Knudsen, we always had the case yet. Yep. yep. And uh, how many, this is another thing I think that makes a display stand out is having that thickness of a woods, you know, not just a few trees, but yep. how many trees are, uh, as we work our way around here, or out in this woods? You know, there's over 150 trees. Wow. Total. And we can uh, look down the laneway again, very realistic. Look down the driveway, and what's kind of funny about this farm is, in real life, you'd be standing in North Dakota right now. The house is in South Dakota. Wow. So the state line is right here, and, uh, uh, for anybody that's a North Dakota State fan or a South Dakota State fan, they uh, they just created the state line trophy. Okay. And between the state of South Dakota and North Dakota, there's state line markers mm -hmm. every okay. half mile. And there's one about right here that was modeled for the trophy. So they came down, did a big press conference, and uh, provided lunch and right on the farm. And okay. uh, they. Uh, had a big article on my uncle that was in the Fargo form. That's wonderful. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, That's yeah it was kind of cool. So, um, of course, going to South Dakota State. My dad went to North Dakota State. So, must make football game time. <laughs> it is, and they just kind of became a, a rival, you mm -hmm. know. So, um, being from Colorado, we have that with the state of Wyoming. So we. We know what that's like having the state line. Sure. And how you so you came? You live in Colorado. Yeah. And how far? You said it was 900 miles to get Just out here. Just shy of 900 miles. So. Yeah, a little over 13 hours to get here. Well, Tom, thank you for taking the time to, to share this history. And, Absolutely. Uh, it's just a, an amazing display to uh, enjoy and share. And uh, again, thank you for uh, taking the time to you build bet. it. You bet. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Take care. Yeah.